Most people, including financial professionals, suck at investing. Despite all of the tools and technological advancements of the 21st century, one thing has remained remarkably consistent, and that is the ability for people like you and I to get in their own way. Today, we're covering five reasons why most people, including you, and me suck at investing and ultimately how to overcome them and get out of your own way. And the first reason is that your investing strategy is too complicated. The financial industry has convinced people that it has to be this way. This is a concept that financial institutions have engineered people into thinking because ultimately they make money when people trade. They understand that by keeping people ignorant and afraid of losing money, it keeps everyday investors like you and I coming into their doors and paying fees for them to invest our money. They're there are hundreds of studies on behavioral finance with objective data telling us that passively investing into a broad market index will be 96% of all other investors and institutions. But somehow many of us still think we're oh so special and we can be the ones to squeak out at least 1% to 2% better returns every year. Case in point, financial institutions spend millions of dollars on algorithms and have teams of analysts working for them. But looking at the historical return of hedge funds, only a small group of these funds can outperform the market over a 10 year term. And that's putting in a remarkable amount of effort and capital expenditure to even do that in the first place. If you subtract out all of the time and money that institutions sink into achieving those returns, most people would probably say it's not worth it, at least at a single investor level. After all, why exert extreme amounts of energy into outperforming when you can just throw money into a well-oiled machine that is designed to perform well over the long term. The biggest lie you've probably ever been told in the investing space is that it's not that simple, when in reality, the hard part is doing that simple thing consistently over long periods of time without letting yourself get in your own way. You hear the most popular financial figures in the space like JL Collins, Warren Buffett, and Charlie Munger regurgitate the same simple things over and over to try to drill it into your head. And then people ask them the same questions a thousand different ways because they want the answer to change and yet you never see them change their framework. Building and maintaining wealth can be boiled down to a few simple steps. And the hard part is overcoming your own flaws and actually executing on those simple steps. Now the second concept is that you only invest in good times. I hear this excuse a lot. I'll start investing when insert some excuse, like when interest rates go down. This is you thinking you can outsmart the machine that is the market and all of those financial institutions with teams of analysts. Delaying investing because ultimately people are afraid of losing money in the short term is a surefire way for suboptimal returns. There will always be someone out there with a seemingly convincing reason that financial Armageddon is here and that you should sell now and buy later to make the most money. Humans are emotional beings, so it's not difficult to imagine a situation where you get inside your own head and create this analysis paralysis chaos that hinders execution. If you are truly investing, then your time horizon needs to be at least 10 years. And if you're looking at a chart of the S&P 500, there isn't a 10 year period where if you were dollar cost averaging the whole time, you came out with a negative return. There are some instances like the top of the market in 2001, where if you lump sum invested all of your money in one year at the top and didn't invest a single dollar more, and you invested at the exact wrong time, that it took a while to get back to even. But if you invested early and often, you're putting your money into an instrument that is ranked by companies that provide the most value in an economic system that ultimately rewards companies for providing value. And in that sense, you are setting yourself up for the ultimate financial success. And the key takeaways from that last sentence are early and often. Invest in good times, invest in bad times, and stay invested. The next concept is thinking you're better than you actually are. Kind of like the sensitive subject of driving, if you ask any individual how good of a driver they are, everyone thinks that they are a good driver. People have the same fallacy when it comes to personal finance and investing. They overestimate their knowledge and skills, they over leverage, and they allocate too much capital into a single stock with the hopes of making it big and making a million dollars and retiring at the age of 23. I was guilty of this and pissed away half, if not more of my college earnings this way, trading short-term options. So when it comes to personal finance and investing, you really need to check your ego 
at the door. Because once you think you've got it all figured out, you'll get thrown a curveball you never even thought to anticipate. I'm not immune to this, and I've got a few scars and memories to serve as a reminder when I get overconfident in the future. It's human nature to have this false sense of confidence once we learn about a subject. This is well illustrated in a graph of the Dunning-Kruger effect, and this chart essentially illustrates the path to enlightenment for most individuals. And this applies to individual concepts as well as broad and far-reaching concepts like the Japanese ikigai or just finding your purpose in life. It breaks down like this. You become interested in a topic and you dive in head first and you learn a lot. You feel like hot shit at this moment because you're on top of the world and you're gonna change your entire trajectory of your life with this one newfound skill. So you go from no knowledge to significantly more than you originally did and you're feeling great. You're at what's referred to as the peak of Mount Stupid. This is essentially where you've learned the theory behind whatever it is, but are lacking the actual experience of doing the thing. Then you start to implement it, or try to, and this is where you quickly realize that life happens. Obstacles pop up, you face adversity on this and that, and realize that this theoretical concept that you've learned about isn't going to be as easy as you thought it would be. This is the Valley of Despair, and this is where you slowly start to learn how much you actually don't know about the subject matter you've been so confident about. And I think this is honestly where a lot of people throw in the towel and say this doesn't work because it's just not as easy as they thought it would be. The fact of the matter is, it may very well work. You just haven't invested the time and gained enough through experience to make it work for you. And if you choose to keep going, you learn that it becomes a practice that you have to continue refining through experience. And over over time, after good experiences, bad experiences, and learning through process, you create a sustainable path to knowledge and enlightenment because you truly understand the thing that you've spent so much time learning and refining over the years. So what it really comes down to is that you have to choose a lifestyle of the pursuit of knowledge. Be humble, learn from yourself, learn from others, and never underestimate what may be hiding out there that you don't know. Mark Twain said it best with his quote, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. The next concept is that you invest without a plan or a strategy. If you don't clearly define what your investment objectives are and how you plan to carry it out at the beginning, you are destined to end up like every other panic-stricken investor or institution and will end up chasing performance and whatever the next big thing is. You'll chase the best performing funds and buy them at their highs, sell them at their lows because they went down and become frustrated and overwhelmed ultimately saying that the game is rigged and never invest money again. But the big point here is that you have to know what you are seeking before you start. If you're investing for the long term and are just going to dollar cost average into the S&P 500 at regular intervals, no matter what's going on, and then when you retire, use the 4% withdrawal rule to live on your nest egg, then that's fine. That is a plan. If you already have a significant amount of money and can generate enough money to live off of from a dividend ETF, then that's also fine. But you must know what you're pursuing and build a plan from there. The only return that matters is the one needed to achieve the goal you set out in the beginning, and the only time that plan should change is if the goalposts move and you change your end objectives. And then the fifth concept is investing before you have your financial house in order. Before you start throwing money into an investing account, you should feel like you're in control of how you spend your money and and have your financial house in order. Remember, money you invest today should be intended to stay invested for at least 10 years. My general recommendation is to build up a cushion of savings on the side for emergencies. Start with one month of living expenses, then look at paying off high interest debt, then start looking into investment vehicles. I'd still continuously add to this emergency fund until you get to a point where you have four to six months of living expenses on the side, but after you hit one month, you can split the money up into paying off debt or investing if you have no debt. And the reason for this is that it provides you with a good financial foundation to build from. You wanna have money on the side and savings first so that you can afford to pay cash and not sell your investments when an emergency pops up, like getting in a car accident or paying for expensive medical procedures. If you have high interest credit card debt that's charging 20% interest, it doesn't make sense to invest money elsewhere that may average 10% per year in returns. My rule of thumb for myself is that if I need the money for anything within five years, whether that's for rent, saving for a down payment on a home, whatever, then I don't invest it. And those are five concepts. To be honest, I probably could have given a few more, but I wanted to keep your attention. Maybe I'll make another one about these in the future, but if you self-identified yourself to one or more of these reasons, you're welcome. Now you're aware of it, 
and you can fix it. I made this list because I know I have firsthand made each one of these mistakes and if I can save even one 20 something year old from making the same mistakes I did, then this content is worth making. Don't forget to drop a like and comment down below if you like the video. I'll see you in the next one, peace.